if you're watching, I hope you are a member, and if you're not a member, that you would consider joining. Uh, Philly Cam is a nonprofit that was created um, by the city of Philadelphia to support public access television, and that means that anybody who lives or works in the greater Philadelphia area can come here to our space and learn how to make media. You can get access to equipment, and then you can submit your own program. So all the programming that you're going to see today is produced by our Philly Cam members, and they've gone through a lot of the workshops here, and uh, it's a really incredible creative community, and I hope that it's something that you will support and consider uh, becoming involved. Me, I am an actor. Mm -hmm. uh, I am an actor from New Jersey. Uh, reason why I love acting because I love the arts of acting. Okay. You know, going to, to workshops, going to school, learning the Stanislavski technique and the checkoff. And it's like more about more about the art, not showing off. But I just enjoy the arts of acting, and I take I take pleasure in doing it. Yeah. My name is Tony Langford. I'm a uh, director um, of a. Um, independent film called Revelation Blue. And I'm also the host and executive producer of a TV show right here on Philly Camp called The Actors' Lounge. Wonderful. And it has been a pleasure um, to be doing both. Um, with The Actors' Lounge, I get to talk to Philadelphia actors, producers, directors, um, just people doing what they do. And I ask them why they do it. And they come on my show and they tell me, uh, why they love to do what they do. And I also show some behind the scenes clips and also some movie trailers. Are there any encouraging words that you could give to any upcoming person that would pursue being a director? You have to let God guide you in a way that allows you to be true to your vision. Yes. And um, just, just, just make a good product that means something, that says something, that says something positive. You know, you put God first, no matter what. Don't listen to what nobody said. You can't do it. You can't do it, or it's hard to tell. No, you don't listen to him. You focus on God. Like he says, like he says, word. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So, you go ahead and you keep fighting. But our show is about creating healthy lifestyles in Philadelphia and around the world. We want everybody to eat healthy, feel healthy, and be healthy. With that in mind, I brought a kickboxer. Abs in. So make sure you're getting that crunch-like movement there. You don't want to just be leaning side to side. Make sure you're getting the work. Seven, six, five, four, three, flip, flip. So we're slipping with a tap. Now a slip is just like in boxing. You're slipping under. Seven, six, five, four, three. Knees up to the front. Up. I think part of our problem with eating sometimes is that we think to eat well, we have to have a lot. Oh, no, no. And when you have a lot of some things, eh, that's not, more than what we really need in our, in our life. Let, let's, let's talk about another issue here, because you talked about type 2 diabetes yes. and high blood pressure and heart disease and all these kinds of things. Some people think that once you have those or you've been diagnosed with those, that you can't get better by, by a healthy lifestyle. What do you say to that? Not true at all. I, I've seen people cure cancer by eating right. I've seen people with diabetes get rid of type 2 diabetes. Sweet potato. It looks like what? One of your organs. Your pancreas. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet potatoes regulates your glycemic index. Mm -hmm. or your sugar keeps it level. So eat a sweet potato every now and then. Twice a week, boil it, no sugar, anything. Right. And they're really good for you. And it helps get rid of uh, uh, these everyday common problems that Americans suffer. Mm -hmm. By the way, peaches and pears, peaches and plums have been studied and they be, have been proving to get rid of blood, uh, breast cancer. So before school opened this year, you were quoted as saying that they would be functional, but not necessarily adequate. Um, we've been hearing a lot from students and staff. Uh, there's a school right behind us that I think is visible, Constitution High School, where yeah. students have been protesting twice a week regularly because it's a small high school and they've, they've lost staff. Uh, and I think they're losing even more as the leveling process goes on. Um, that they have been so severely cut that they're not really even functional. So how do you feel now, uh, two months into the school year almost, 
about how, uh, I know you've been able to restore some positions, about the adequacy and fun of the schools right now. Yeah, and so I've been to, um, to date, um, since the beginning of school, about 35, between 35 and 40 schools. And what is interesting is, um, even in the classrooms, um, the classrooms look very similar than, I mean, in approach and what students are doing and, and the, the level of engagement, the level of commitment and energy on the, on, the, um, on the part of the teachers. It looks very similar to how it did a year ago. It's when those students are not in classes and when they're thinking about things like in, getting into college or eighth graders thinking about getting into high schools. It's if students are having struggles with social and emotional issues um, in the, and an individual who can help them may not be there that day. It's when our students are outside of those classes that uh, the resources are very, and look and feel very different. Uh, we are celebrating our fourth anniversary of being uh, public access television here in Philadelphia and we've been going live all day and we're continuing now with our member forum and it's an opportunity for us to talk to some of our nonprofit uh, organizational members and I'm really happy to be joined now with by uh, Mary Tracy from Scenic Philadelphia so welcome well it's really a pleasure to be here <laughs> congratulations four years is uh, it's a uh, it was a long, hard struggle to get there, and you have done just wonderful work now that you're here. I'm so well, happy. Thank you, and you were a big part of it. So, um, but we'll talk about that in a second. Well, basically, we are provide a series of support services to help individuals who are trying to start businesses actually get started. And for those businesses that are already existing, we try to provide them some tools and services to help them operate better. Uh, on your website uh, uh, for Philadelphia Reads, you say that you're dedicated to raising a city of readers. And how do you do that? So we have four awesome programs, but today I really want to talk about one of the programs where we help students gain strong literacy skills. And all the studies show that if children are reading at grade level by grade three, mm -hmm. that it's the best predictor of graduating from high school and college and becoming um, fruitful members of society and independent. Mm -hmm. So, so how, tell me about Walking Fish Theater. How long have you been around? Um, and, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, we opened our doors seven years ago, so mm -hmm. we're in our seventh season on the Frankfurt oh, Avenue so Arts Corner. I know, tell me about it. <laughs> um, and. Um, we are a nonprofit producing and presenting theater company. Mm -hmm. We use theater, literature, and myth to bring together the community and the artists mm -hmm. through the magic of live theater. Hello, Philadelphia, and welcome to Philadelphia Politics for Dummies. My name is Carol Tart, and we're going to get into a discussion regarding the state of Philadelphia politics. And voting is such an important responsibility of your citizenship, and the, try to make it relevant, because if uh, students are coming from schools that are failing, they need to be engaged to vote to change those schools. And I think getting more awareness out, um, 2014, they're going to have the committee people uh, races and get involved. If your committee person didn't knock on your door, if you don't know who your committee person is, go out, register to run for committee person. You only need 10 signatures. And whether you're a Democrat or Republican, do that, get involved, get engaged, and uh, get passionate about your community. And one way to do that is becoming a committee person um, in your ward. Looking out this window, if I walked outside and took this mic and I asked, 10 people walking down the street. Who's running for district attorney? Who are the candidates? Democrat and Republican. Who's running for city controller? Who's running for judges? I bet only two out of the 10 people would know the names. That's a big problem. And for some reason, for me, I feel this is one of the most important elections even more important than the presidential election, even more important than the mayoral election, because this is the most local. The controller is the money manager. We need to know where the commas are going. We need to know where the decimals are going. We need to know where money is going. And if we don't know what a controller does, how can we vote for someone if we don't know what that position is?
Happy birthday, Philly Cam, and happy birthday to me. I'm 40 plus. <laughs> and as you know, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I have a brave breast cancer survivor, Miss Crystal Hanford. Hello, Crystal. Hi, Salima. How are you today? I'm fantastic, and thank you for coming to my show, and thank you for opening up to me about your journey. No problem. Um, you know, because breast cancer, of course, is one of the things that women fear most. Yes. You know, our breast is yes. part of who yes. we are. It is. You know, even though we don't want to admit it sometimes. True. <laughs> but um, tell me, Crystal, when you, um, how did you know that you, did, how did you find out you had cancer? Did you, did you feel something in your body? Did you go to the doctor? Was it an accident? What? How did they find out? Um, actually, it happened when I was um, laying in bed with my lover at the time, okay. and she went to touch me, reaching over to get something, and I felt a pain when she leaned in. Okay. And I never felt that before. So she said, babe, I really think you need to go to the doctor and see what's up with that, because breast cancer runs in my family. Really? Yes. I was 36 at the time. Okay. And my son, my oldest son at the time, was in the fourth grade and very computer savvy. He went online and found out about chemotherapy. Okay. And I tell this story because it's relevant to mothers who have children to get the right mindset. Um, a day before my surgery, um, he came into my room and he said, Mom, I know your surgery is tomorrow, but I don't care if you come home bald headed with no boobies. I need you to come home to me and my brother. Okay. And that any thought of vainness just went out the window. He didn't care if I was bald headed with no breasts. He just wanted his mother. For anybody, like, I think the, one of the most important things that we always say, um, if you're an actor, number one, the English language or whatever language, I mean, you could be from, you know, Yugoslavia, I don't care, but whatever the language is, you have to be able to master that language. I mean, yes. pronunciation, enunciation, elocution, and to be able to speak first and foremost, because Absolutely. as an actor, that is part of your tool, that is part of your trade yes. of words. And then after that, just being conscious of life, mm -hmm. right? Having a perspective on life and what it is and having um, a command over the English language, having a command over your emotions, and just having a perspective and a command over over life. Because mm -hmm. as an actor, that's what we're doing. We're recreating life uh, on stage or on screen. And so you have to be a, um, what I like to call a student of human behavior. Right. But before we go any further about teas, I want to give you a little bit about a beauty tip. Because of the weather changing, mm. we know that our skin is dry. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes we might feel like it's a desert. You know, you feel like, is my skin going to ever... All ashy. Yes. But a skin, <laughs> but having healthy skin in the wintertime is not a mirage. We definitely can make sure we can search for some relief. And some of the things that we can do, we have to first start off and maintain with a healthy diet. We have to drink plenty of water. Plenty we of have water. to eat natural um, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, uh, meats. Stay away from caffeine, alcohol, tobacco. And GMOs. Yes, because guess what? What it does is that it's a natural dehydrator. They're skin dehydrators. Mm. So staying away from GMOs, they're, that's what we have is for processed foods right, and right. all those kind of things. So we definitely have to stay away from that. Um, there are different forms of moisturizing your skin through teas and through different things. We can use them as, like I said, facial um, masks. We can use them as exfoliants. Hi everyone, welcome to Heart of Philly and today this is our grand anniversary show here at Philly Cam. So I'm excited to bring back some of my favorite guests who have appeared on Heart of Philly in the past. What I started doing a lot this past summer was actually sewing hair up. Meaning that I would actually get like sewing. Did you say sewing? Sewing with a needle, but a plastic needle, by the way. <laughs> you know, don't want to puncture somebody's scalp. And then using different threads, which can have been on on Fabric Row, Fourth Street. I've got everything at my disposal there. Using different ribbons, and I would stitch the hair up, just by literally stitching it. Or if they're like a, on one client with a bob, I just actually went in and did like a lot of stitching 
across the bob just so that it gave it because sometimes people with short hair what can I do so but my my biggest thing is for for people my best advice is prepare everything ahead I can't stress that enough because there's nothing worse than you being stressed your company senses it they walk in the door they're feeling uncomfortable because you're frazzled make everything ahead your oven is actually can be a warming drawer set it to 170 at the lowest setting make everything ahead pop it in there don't sweat it it won't dry out you know one to two hours ahead have a cocktail yay oh, <laughs> your guests come in time. you're so relaxed amazing. candles are set playlist is on and everyone's happy and you can go to your own party yeah my whole thing nice. is if I'm not having a good time at my own party I'm not having it I'm Vivian Tyler. I'm Harold Harbinger. And I'm Harold... wait, that's you, um, Tyler... This no. is Johnny Smith, and this is Second Look. Live. 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 So, Vivian, who will we be speaking with today? Well, Harold, we have quite a few fascinating guests today, such as the oldest man alive, and the president of the My Pretty Pony fan club, Vinny. Oh, I like My, my Pretty Pony. I like uh, Rainbow Flash. Yes, 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 Charlie. My Pretty Pony. But we're not seeing Vinny quite yet. First, we have our fashion advisor and makeover expert. And here she comes now, all the way from Bond Hill, Ohio, the, astu the esteemed Ruby Ducky. I just like to say that rubber ducks are the epitome of greatness. Nothing exceeds them. I'm lost, still trying to find myself Wishing upon a star, but I might blind myself As I look behind myself Looking down a ladder to climb myself Lost, still trying to find myself Wishing upon a star, but I might blind myself As I look behind myself Looking down a ladder to climb myself That I climb myself my life deserves a mediation, can be so deviate. My depression, cause of my pain, it left me deviated. I never thought that a change could ever be created. Patience is the key to the game, so I demonstrated. On the road to the riches, and all I feel is hatred, so I stay alone. I prefer to be isolated. My self discipline is important, I illustrate it. Living life is a legend, it's hard to imitate it. I'm in a shop for success, so you should imitate it before it's too late and your dreams are disintegrated. I'm Work too hard and it won't be negated Cause when you work for what you got, you appreciate it So my appreciation to my dedication Came from nothing, so I guess it was my desperation They gave me motivation They say you never know until you go So now I go without a hesitation We on the floor and we ain't it out And if them haters start hating and we laying them out This is a new hit for y'all to move this jam is so sweet, they call it cool whip. We came to get so though the prince of Palm Beach, you already know I'm doing my thing on the best day of a song. It's a new dance, man. What's that called? My right is a black man. To walk on concrete without wandering the jungle. Here in the stampede of races, to be fearless of ghosts that floats over my shoulder with white skin. And shutting to the right, they left the cold shoulder and hit with glaciers. Cut bone deep or raise a fist harder than boulders. Knuckles shatter like glass shards, but the wall lets you know that black people at heart. But it was just hard to pick up the pieces. Welcome to Neighborhood Sports Showdown meets Dotcom Sports. Now, normally I'm your host, Kwame Fisher Jones of Dotcom Sports, but today we have a crossover edition show where both sports shows will be intertwining with one another. Well, it seems as if you're also a person who concentrates on results. So in so comparison, in comparison, I would say that the Eagles franchise has done far better than the 76ers wow. has. Philadelphia as a whole is known for having the best talent and coaches that don't do what they're supposed to do here. It specializes <laughs> in getting the best records and the most wins here. They go somewhere else and do it. So we're sort of like, you know, this trial city that athletes and coaches go through and then you know they do poorly here and it seems like everywhere else they can go nowhere but up
that you you get you suffer from the politics in your area. Mm -hmm. It's just the same thing in Philly, everywhere. Mm -hmm. You suffer from the politics in your area. If you don't get control of your politics, your school district, your police force, that's why there's so much killings and so much problems going on in the city of Camden, mm -hmm. Philly, Detroit, Chicago. That's why it's happening. Mm -hmm. We always come, we always, we from the straight from the heart, you know, and we just basically, it's about the children and their future, you know, and the children are our future. So if we're not teaching them our legacy and our heritage and everything that we, that we have that, that says who we are will die with mm -hmm. us. So we have to pass on to our young people and then, and the, you know, babies coming up. They're like, they're being born smart. You know what I mean? Right. They're messing with computers when, you know, like someone my age, of course, I know how to use a computer, but <laughs> I'm just saying there are some people who don't know how to use a computer, you know, and they, they, they have cell phones and, and knowing how to connect a game and connect a dot yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So we got to give them what is rightfully theirs and that's their heritage and their culture and their richness of their heritage as my husband said that they came from kings and queens and not you know people that they want you to believe about his story not our story mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in. This is Philly Cam, and we're celebrating Freedom of Speech Week. So welcome to Paul Smith, in my humble opinion. In regards to discipline by step parents, you know, where do you draw the line? I mean, everybody's, everybody's different, every situation is different, but if I'm marrying, you know, uh, my, my, my wife has a 10-year-old child and we're married now, I mean, what would be your, your thoughts on how I would, you know, go upon disciplining this child. Right. Same thing, you have to be mindful of your choices. I'm not just choosing for me, I'm not just choosing someone that makes me happy, whatever the case, I have to be mindful of, of who is right for my child as well. So I don't even put my daughter in a circumstance where I don't feel like I found someone worthy for her, as well as for me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So um, obviously I'm gonna choose someone who shares my values. I don't believe in corporal punishment. So I don't believe in spanking. I have an intellectual child. I am <laughs> You don't have any kids either. You're I'm, right, but if I did, I would I'm an intellectual, you know what I'm saying? I would so, beat your kids. So that's why we would never get married. We're good. So. <laughs> this uh, episode is brought to you by Statuary. Keep those odors at bay, P.U. Woo! Today, our special guest is the winner of the 2013 Miss World Competition, Miss Philippines. Welcome, Miss Mesopotamia Lafay. Thanks you, Mrs. Miller. Good evening, Philadelphia. Mabuhay. Would you, uh, would you like some lipstick? No. No, no I'm gonna put some more lipstick on. Oh, it's much better. It's so soothing. It moisturizes my skin. Oh, oh, oh what's going on? I'm so sorry to interrupt, but, but this is Miller. There's, there's protesters out there protesting against Philly Cam. Uh, they say they hate you, Mrs. Miller. I don't get it. Oh. What should we do? Oh, let's go to a commercial. Hello, world. It's a song that we're singing. Come on, get happy. Uh, you know, while Pennsylvania doesn't um, doesn't recognize same-sex marriage, does the Affordable Care Act, as you see it right now, does it have provision for such couples? So the Affordable Care Act does a lot of things for LGBT people. One is, according to a recent survey that was conducted by the Center for American Progress, about one in three LGBT people are uninsured. I'm sure folks are familiar, a common problem for example, is that one partner can get health insurance through their employer, but then the other partner can't be put on family coverage. So now the majority of these folks will have the opportunity to go into the health insurance marketplace and get coverage there. 
It's unfortunate that Pennsylvania hasn't yet moved forward with the Medicaid expansion, which is a whole other issue. But we are still left now in Pennsylvania with a gap of folks that are not going to get coverage, which wouldn't exist if our governor and our lawmakers would move forward with this piece. Well, the pre-existing condition uh, factor certainly was a, a very big issue with women. Oh, absolutely. In this state, in the state of Pennsylvania, and until the ACA takes effect, um, pregnancy is considered a pre-existing condition. So, you know, and, and uh, maternity care is not um, mandated in this state. It will be under the Affordable Care Act. But um, the truth is you could be a, you know, you could be employed, you could be insured and become pregnant and be out of luck. <laughs> and certainly, with HIV being a pre-existing condition, your, you know, your patients can no longer be discriminated for health care either. Definitely. And you know, we're, we're still trying to figure out how the ACA is going to work for our patients with the other insurances that are out there. Now, there are coverages and um, you know, government-funded coverages, but we're hoping that this will help a significant amount of patients um, get better access to care and be able to go to some of those those preventative health care services that they weren't able to go to. I have many patients that that work and, and were able to get them access to their medication through a special pharmaceutical benefit program, which is fantastic. I can get them their medication and I can get them their lab work, but I can't get them a mammogram and I can't send them to the cardiologist and, and all of those things that we're hoping that that'll help with them because those patients who, who work and, and are in society can get all those other services that they haven't been able to get.